Adding a render mode to a Blazor component is a new feature for .NET 8. We'll show you how you can render between server and WebAssembly for different components in the same Blazor application. Hit the subscribe button as we take a look at render modes. In order to set up render modes for a Blazor application, we need to create a new project and in Visual Studio we can select the Blazor web app template and go ahead and set up our project. So we're going to call it round the code blazer render modes and then when we click next we're going to be greeted with a few options so we can select the framework the authentication type and then we've got the interactivity type now the none sets it up as an ssr hosting model and if you want to watch our video on it you can check it out at youtube.com slash app round the code we've also got our traditional hosting models like server and web assembly and we've also got this new one called auto what this does is that a component will be rendered from the server but then it will be downloaded into the browser for caching. That means it can be used in future references. We've also got the interactivity location, and this is where we can configure the project depending on whether we want the same render mode globally or on a per page component basis. Let's go through each option and see how it works. We're first gonna have a look at setting the interactivity type of server and the location on a per page component basis. Let's create the project for that. So if we go into the program.cs file, we can see we've got this add razor components extension method added to the iService collection. In addition to that, we've got this add interactive server components, and this allows us to use Blazor server throughout the application. If we go to the app component, it's specifying the roots component without a render mode. Without a render mode, it will assume that it's going to use the SSR rendering mode. One particular component where we can't use the SSR rendering mode is the counter component. What this does is it increases the count by one every time we click on the button. We can see that's working there. And the reason why this is working is because we're specifying the render mode as Blazor server. If we were to go ahead and remove that and we run the application now, we can see that's no longer working. And the reason being is because it's using the default SSR rendering mode which doesn't support front-end interactivity. Let's see what the difference is when we change the interactivity location from per page to global. If we go into the program.cs file, we can see that it's exactly the same line that gets added in there. But if we go into the app.razor in the roots component, we can see we've added a render mode with render mode.interactive server. That means by default, all the components will use Blazor server. So we can see this with the counter component now. There's no render mode specified, but if we go ahead and run that, we will still see that the actual counter works. And we can see that is the case. Learn Blazor WebAssembly with our three part online course series, as well as other .NET courses at roundthecode.com slash courses. Next, we're gonna have a look at WebAssembly and we're gonna select the per page component. Now you notice that we've got two projects set up. We've got this server-side project and this separate standalone Blazor WebAssembly project. Now the reason for this is because if we want to switch between render modes, we need to do that on the server. So in the program.cs file on the server application, we've still got the add razor components being added to the iService collection, but now we've got the add interactive WebAssembly components. That means we can specify components to use Blazor WebAssembly. If we wanted to add Blazor server as well, we could go ahead and add the interactive server components, and that will now support server and WebAssembly across the Blazor application. Now, once again, in app.razor, we're not specifying the render mode in there, so by default, it's using SSR. So if we go into the counter razor component, notice as well it's in the Blazor WebAssembly application, we need to specify the render mode as interactive WebAssembly, so it works for us. Now we're going to change the interactivity location to global and see what the differences are. Once again, it's created two separate projects. So we've got the server project here, and we've also got a separate standalone WebAssembly project. If we go into the program.cs, we can see exactly the same lines been added to the configuration. However, if we go into the app.razor component, we can see that the roots component now has a render mode of interactive WebAssembly. That means by default, all the components will use Blazor WebAssembly. As a result, if we go into the counter component, we no longer have to specify the render mode for it, as it knows it's using Blazor WebAssembly. Now we're gonna have a look at the new render mode of auto on a per page component basis. 
Like with WeatherSemily, we've got two projects set up. So we've got our server side project set up. And we've also got a separate standalone WeatherSemily project. We go into the program.cs file in our server side project. We can see that support's been set up for server and WebAssembly, so we can use that in components. If we go into the app component, we can see the roots component isn't specifying a render mode. So by default, it's going to use SSR. Now we can't use SSR in the counter component, so we need to specify the render mode. And this time we're specifying it as auto. So what will happen here is that initially it will download the component from the server, but it will also download it to the browser in WebAssembly and use it for caching. As a result of downloading it from the server initially, there's a slight delay before we can use the interactivity. So I'll show you. So if you click on the counter now, we start clicking it, it's not working. We need to wait till it's actually downloaded to the browser before it will start working. Now we're going to use auto, but we're going to select the interactivity location as global. If we go into the app component, we can see we're specifying the routes and we've also got a render mode of interactive auto. As a result of that, if we go into our counter component, we can see we no longer have to specify the render mode for it. This is one of the great things about Blazor in .NET 8. We can be flexible on the render mode we specify on a component by component basis. Thanks very much for watching and hit a like on the video.